I'm on a plateau and it's pissing me off. Raise your hand if you have ever felt personally victimized by the scale. You all better be raising your hands right now. Hello, internet friends. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. If you're not new here, then you may know that I have been in a plateau for quite a while now. So today I'm diving deep into the very frustrating world of plateaus. Hope this video doesn't fall flat. So even though I have been thoroughly salty about being in a plateau, I'll admit I haven't bothered to do any research on it, like at all. And it's about time that I do. I also put up a poll and that's the one that you guys voted for. So there's that reason too. But before I get any further, time for some disclaimers. I am just your random person on the internet with no credentials whatsoever, and all of the information I'm sharing with you is from resources I found on the internet with Google as my guide. I am interpreting what I understood from those resources and hopefully sharing correct information. But as always, there is conflicting data, and your best bet is talking to a healthcare professional. References in the description box below. All right, with all that out of the way, as per usual, let's break this down into digestible sections. Chapter one will be defining and identifying plateaus. Chapter two is understanding plateaus. And chapter three, how to overcome and accept a plateau, hopefully. Define and identify. What is a weight loss plateau? Simply put, a weight loss plateau is the scale weight not moving for a period of time. That's it, it's that simple. Great, video's over, my work here is done. That was easy, uh, except it's not. When we are talking about a plateau, we need to remember that it is a fat loss plateau, not a weight loss plateau that we are concerned about. Scale weight is not the most accurate depiction of progress. There are a lot of different factors that can affect the scale, such as hydration levels, stress levels, hormones, recent foods you've eaten, sleeping habits, and increased muscle mass. That's why relying solely on the scale can be misleading. You might be losing inches even if the scale isn't budging right now. <clears throat> Sorry, we're just gonna have to get through this. I don't know what's happening with the voice. Some weeks the inches will go down and other weeks the pounds will. But here's the key. If you're seeing those inches melt down in the right spots, especially your stomach, that's what really matters. You're not stuck, you're still making progress. Keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Remember that the scale doesn't always tell the whole story. So from here on out, we're specifically talking about fat loss plateaus. So let's define that. A fat loss plateau means that your body has stopped losing fat despite continuing to follow a diet and exercise plan that previously resulted in fat loss. You'd been making progress for a period of time and now that progress has stopped, which is completely normal. Research has shown that plateaus are a common part of the journey, so just enjoy the journey, I guess. There is no set time on when you'll start or stop a plateau. Every person is different. Some will refer to a plateau when they haven't seen any progress for a couple weeks and others will need over a month. I did find about four different articles referencing a 2014 study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that indicated that most people will experience a plateau after about six months of consistent weight loss. But as usual, I found this study to be in need of more research. So if you gain anything from today's video, it's to do your own research. Don't just assume you'll go into a plateau at six months because some guy on the internet wrote an article and said so. All right, moving on to the fun stuff. Understanding plateaus. First and foremost, if you're not losing body fat, you are not in a calorie deficit. We'll dive deeper into this and discuss various factors, but the key point is that a caloric deficit forces your body into using stored energy, including glycogen and fat. Glycogen, which is made of glucose molecules linked together, similar to starch found in plants, but specifically found in animals, is broken down into glucose for energy when needed. Stored mainly in the liver and muscles, glycogen can only last a few hours depending on activity levels. When these stores are low or depleted, your body turns to fat as its primary energy source, especially during low to moderate intensity activities or periods of fasting. Therefore, if you're not seeing fat loss, it's time to examine your energy expenditure and ensure you're consuming fewer calories than you burn. If you haven't figured out your calorie deficit or maintenance levels for a while, this could be why results have stalled. The best way to determine your maintenance is by calculating your total daily energy expenditure, TDEE, which you can do by tracking your food intake accurately. Remember, it is essential to weigh and measure your food while tracking. 
While online calculators can provide a rough estimate for your TDEE, they don't account for individual differences like genetics. And even dietitians can be off by about 20%. The exact number isn't as crucial as understanding how you're tracking your calories and knowing where adjustments may be needed. Depending where you are on your journey, lowering your calories may not always be the solution. For instance, my calorie intake is quite low, so I'm hesitant to reduce it any further. However, I do have to recognize that even with a low caloric intake, I may not be in a caloric deficit. Any form of calorie restriction will cause your TDEE to decrease, typically around 10 to 15%. This is your body's natural defense against starvation, likely an evolutionary trait that once helped us during times of food scarcity. Essentially, being on a caloric deficit for an extended period alters your energy requirements. Now that we've touched on what a TDEE is and how a calorie restriction can cause it to decrease, let's break down exactly what the TDEE factors are exactly. Understanding the components like your basic metabolic rate, BMR, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, thermic effect of food, TEF, and exercise activity thermogenesis, EAT, is crucial to seeing the full picture of how our bodies burn energy daily and why plateaus can happen. Wait, is that basic or basil? Am I saying it wrong? Oh, I said it wrong. It's basil? It's basil. Wait. Basal metabolic rate. Okay. I'm not redoing all that. It's bas basal metabolic rate. We're going to remember this. Sorry, side tangent. I told you guys I'm not an expert. <laughs> basal metabolic rate. This refers to the amount of energy your body needs at rest both physically and mentally, in a stable environment that isn't too hot or too cold, and at least 12 hours after your last meal. BMR covers the energy required to support vital functions like breathing, blood circulation, organ performance, and essential brain activity. This can account for 40 to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body can adjust your BMR downward through several mechanisms including a decrease in lean muscle mass, lowered hormone levels, reduced thermogenesis, metabolic adaptation, and decreased cellular metabolism. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Although it might seem minor, NEAT can account for approximately 15% of your daily expenditure. However, as you lose fat, your body may subconsciously reduce NEAT to conserve energy. This reduction can manifest in subtle ways such as pacing less while on the phone, tapping your foot less frequently, twirling your pen less, typing more slowly, and doing fewer chores. You might even find yourself parking closer to your destination without even intending to. Thermic effect of food. This represents the amount of energy your body uses to digest, absorb, metabolize, store, and dispose of food and nutrients. The TEF varies based on types and amounts of food consumed. Protein has a TEF of 20 to 30 percent, carbohydrates range from 5 to 10, and fats are between 0 to 3 percent. For a mixed meal, the TEF is about 10 percent and remains relatively stable, even in periods of energy deprivation. However, when you reduce food intake through dieting, your body's energy requirement for digestion also decreases. Exercise activity thermogenesis. This refers to the energy used during voluntary exercise, such as sports or fitness activities. For most people, this accounts for about 5% of their total daily energy expenditure, though it can vary based on activity levels. And cardiovascular systems. A study in the Journal of Applied Psychology found that the more people trained, their energy expenditure for the same workout decreased by about 20%. This is due to their muscle and cardiovascular systems becoming more efficient, using less energy for the same tasks. For example, with consistent aerobic training, your body becomes more effective at oxygen transport and fat utilization, which can help sustain performance even as calorie burn decreases each session. Now that we've broken down the key factors of total daily energy expenditure, it's important to address the key reason why their impact tends to diminish over time metabolic adaptation. This is your body's way of conserving energy by reducing its overall energy expenditure as you lose weight. Metabolic adaptation involves several physiological changes. As you shed pounds or cut calories, 
your body may lower its basal metabolic rate and decrease NEAT. Additionally, adaptive thermogenesis, your body's ability to reduce heat in response to caloric restriction or cold exposure, can decline as your body adjusts to a lower caloric intake. Hormonal changes also play a significant role in the process. Reductions in the thyroid hormone and leptin, both crucial for regulating metabolism and hunger, further contribute to the decrease in energy expenditure. Prolonged drops in these hormones can make continued weight loss challenging. The extent of metabolic adaptation can vary between individuals based on various factors, such as genetics, body composition, hormones, dietary habits, activity levels, age, gender, and previous weight loss history. Some researchers claim that metabolic adaptation significantly contributes to fat loss plateaus by substantially reducing metabolic rate. However, other studies like in the 2021 study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition suggests that the impact of metabolic adaptation might be overstated and behavioral factors could be just as significant which could have some merit considering that when in a prolonged energy deficit, people exhibit an increased food seeking behavior and crave higher calorie foods. But also the levels for the hunger hormone ghrelin tends to rise with weight loss, further stimulating appetite. So is it a behavioral or a physiological process? I'm gonna say it's a bit of both. So while accountability is important, it's also important to know that plateaus happen for a reason accepting and overcoming. A plateau reflects your body's attempt to achieve homeostasis, which can actually be a positive sign of metabolic health and physiological stability. It can also be an opportunity for review and adjustment and encourage sustainable changes by focusing on long-term goals and reinforcing positive habits. It can be a testament to your adaptation and resilience, and it could shift your attention to other areas of well-being such as improving fitness, managing stress, or enhancing mental health. Rather than viewing a plateau as a negative outcome, we should consider a natural phase where our bodies stabilize and adjust, signaling progression in our journey. However, it's important to recognize that a fat loss plateau won't resolve on its own. Without adjustments to your exercise or diet routine, your body will remain in its adapted state and further fat loss may stall. We're often reminded that calories and consistency are crucial and finding a plan that works for you is essential. While consistency and a good diet plan did help me lose 55 pounds, it is now clear that my fat loss has stalled. Despite being patient and giving my plan time to work, ensuring that my plateau wasn't just weight fluctuations, I need to accept that change is necessary. Since I'm unwilling to lower my calories any further or increase my exercise intensity, because I want to maintain sustainable levels, I need to explore other options. Fortunately, there are several strategies that might help reignite my process. First is just rechecking my plan and my adherence to it. It's possible that my current approach isn't sustainable long-term and may need some adjustments, or I might not have been as disciplined as I thought. This means reassessing my caloric intake, accurately weighing and measuring my foods, and ensure I'm meeting my macro goals. I also need to maintain consistency with my exercise routine, allow for proper recovery, and make sure I'm getting enough sleep, managing my stress, and staying hydrated. Basically, the first step is double checking your plan and how you feel about it. The second step is to shake up your routine. And I must admit, I love chaos. So this sounds really fun. So let's dive into some strategies to revitalize our mundane routines. Change your exercises. If you've been mainly lifting weights, start walking as well and vice versa. Try different workouts, intensity levels, and incorporate new challenges. Our muscles can get used to repetitive movements, which can lead to decreased effectiveness. And if you're not incorporating some form of strength training, I would start considering it. Building muscle can boost your metabolism and help you burn more calories while at rest. Adjust your macros. Ensure enough protein and fiber. Aim for 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day at minimum. I'll say it again, at minimum. For fiber, aim for about 38 grams per day for men and 25 for women. Increasing your protein can preserve muscle mass and boost your metabolism. While fiber can influence blood sugar levels and potentially impact your metabolic rate. 
And on that note, make sure that you are choosing wholesome ingredients. Choosing nutrient-dense wholesome foods supports overall health and can regulate appetite. Foods rich in essential nutrients can improve satiety and reduce cravings, potentially leading to a more balanced caloric intake. Calorie cycling, calorie shifting, or zigzag dieting involves varying your daily caloric intake. Instead of maintaining a consistent caloric intake, you alternate between higher and lower calorie days. For example, you might eat at maintenance level or slightly above on some days and on a deficit on others to potentially improve fat loss, muscle gain, or metabolic function. It may also reduce feelings of deprivation or boredom on a diet, as higher calorie days can provide some psychological relief. Some people use a weekly approach, alternating between high and low calorie days across the week. Others adjust daily, depending on activity level, workouts, or other factors. It can be tailored further by adjusting macronutrient ratios or meal timing to match the higher or lower calorie days. Just ensure that on higher calorie days, your diet remains balanced, nutritious, and delicious. Diet break. Diet breaks are pauses from a restrictive diet or caloric deficit. The goal is to give yourself both a mental and physical reset, which can help you stick to your plan better and support long-term success in weight loss management or fat loss. During a diet break, you temporarily increase your caloric intake to maintenance or a little above maintenance. This pause in caloric restriction allows your body and mind to recover from the stresses of dieting. Make sure to determine the timing and duration of your break. This could be a week or a few days, depending on your overall plan and goals. During the break, maintain balanced nutrition. Keep track of your weight, performance, and overall well-being during the break. Adjust if needed to ensure that the break is beneficial and does not lead to unwanted fat gain. After the break, gradually return to your previous caloric deficit or dieting plan. This transition should be smooth to avoid any adverse effects on metabolism or adherence. Done thoughtfully, a diet break offers mental relief from constant calorie restriction and physically it can counteract metabolic adaptation by temporarily boosting metabolism and supporting muscle preservation. So don't be afraid to take a break. In fact, I encourage it because fat loss is hard and we all deserve a break sometimes. Wrapping things up, remember that hitting a plateau isn't a sign of failure. It's a natural part of the journey. The key is to not get discouraged, but to see this as an opportunity to reassess and refine your approach. And yes, you will have to refine it because plateaus will not go away on their own, typically, unfortunately. So whether it's adjusting your routine, tweaking your nutrition, or giving yourself a well-deserved break, the goal is to keep moving forward in a sustainable way. Keep experimenting, stay patient, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. Your journey is unique, and every step, even the challenging ones, brings you closer to your goals. As for me, I'm gonna mess with my macros, switch up my exercise routine a bit, and give myself an increased calorie day where I might actually just get to enjoy a piece of cheesecake. I mean, technically I should be increasing all the macros on that day at the same point, but also really want a cheesecake once in a while. We'll see how that goes. I'm vlogging it now. I think I'm gonna make it a vlog series for one month. We'll see how quickly I can get out of it. That being said, thanks for watching. That being said, thanks for watching. And let me know if you guys are in a plateau, did this video help? Is there anything I missed? Are there any suggestions for my next informative video? And just also, how you doing? Let me know. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys again in the next video. Bye. Simply put, a scale, a fat loss plateau. Reachers, reachers, research has shown that Research has shown that plateaus are whoa, is broken down into gluten. Therefore, if you're not seeing fat loss, it's time to examine your energy expenditure. The exact number isn't as crucial, crucial, although it might seem meaner, meaner. This is due to their musculars. This is this is due to their muscles, muscles, which can help sustain, which can help sustain, sustain which can help sustain, sustain, which can, s some research, 
Some researchers claim. Some researchers claim. Okay, well, I need a break. Some researchers claim. Some reach. Some researchers. A plateau reflects your body's attempt. Because I want to <sighs> idolize our Monday routine. Ah. Foods rich in essential nutrients can improve satiety. Fucking got it. I'm getting really tired. Depending on your goals. <clears throat> well, looks like it's overheating. So.